hello students in the previous lesson we have already learned how male and female gametes have formed in today's lesson we are going to learn about pollination which is said to be the first process of sexual fertilization in the flowering plants now what is pollination pollination is basically the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of one flower to the stigma of the same or another flower and it occurs at two celled stage of pollen grains now pollination can be of two types one is the self pollination another one is the cross pollination now what is self pollination self pollination means when the pollen grain is transferred from the anther of a flower to the stigma of the same flower then it is said to be self pollination that is why it is self that means same plant it has to be same plant like you can see here in the diagram showing the self pollination here this is the anther that is the male gamete this is the anther and this is the stigma so the whole thing here is occurring within the same plant so that is why it is said to be self pollination self pollination can further be divided into two types one is autogamy what is autogamy autogamy means when the pollen is transferred from anther of one flower to the stigma of the same flower here it is basically found in mirabilis catharanthus okay now next is gate onogamy here it is slightly a different one where what happens it is a type of self pollination but here the anther is being transferred from one flower to the stigma of another flower but it has to be of the same plant in the previous one we have learned that in autogamy the transfer is taking place within one flower but here the transfer of pollen grains is taking place from one flower to the stigma of another flower but it has to be of same plant like this okay here you can see the diagram where you can see the self pollination here in this type this one it is occurring within the same flower that is why it is known as autogamy this portion is known as autogamy and here the pollination is taking place from one flower to another flower but of the same plant you can see here then it is said to be gate onogamy okay another type of pollination is cross pollination now what is cross pollination here the pollen grain is being transferred from the anther of one plant to the stigma of the flower of another plant so that is called cross pollination in the previous diagram you have already seen here that the transfer of pollen grain is taking place from one flower of one plant to the stigma of another flower of another plant likewise this this is called cross pollination cross pollination is also known as xenogamy or allogamy this migration of pollen grain from one flower to the stigma of different flower this is carried out with the help of some external agencies we are going to learn about those external agencies in the next slide 
what are the agencies the first one is the anemophily it is a type of pollination where the po pollinating agent is wind and the flower from where the pollen grains are being carried are known as anemophilous flowers okay these flowers are basically small and inconspicuous and they are very light in nature as you can see here in the diagram they are very loosely attached and they are very light so that they can be carried easily by the wind they are non sticky as well and this is found very commonly in maize in date palm in coconut palm okay where it favors wind pollination next is hydrophily hydrophily where the pollinating agent is water hydro means water okay so here pollination takes place below the surface of the water and here the flowers are very small and inconspicuous to other agents they do not have any fragments and their petals are not brightly colored the pollen is basically adapted to be able to float in water and this is seen in valisneria in zoophily there are different types of agents we are going to see here it can be human beings bats it can be birds the first one which we are going to learn here is birds that is ornithophily they are the pollinating agent is bird and the flower is known as ornithophilus flowers these flowers are basically scentless they are bigger in size okay they are brightly colored so that birds get attracted to it very easily also the nectar should be very much available here and the pollen here the characteristics of pollen here is very sticky so that it gets it can adhere to the body of the bird in the next part you are going to see entomophily here the flowers are known as entomophilus flowers and these flowers are pollinated by the insects okay i cannot show you the color of the flower here but the flowers are basically very attractive and brightly colored with bright petals and it has got a lot of fragments so that it can attract the insects they have got broad stigmas or anthers to allow the insect to perch on it okay the pollen grains here are very spiny that helps them to stick on to the body of the insects okay as a result the pollen grains can be carried by the insects here next is chiroptery in chiroptery basically the flowers are pollinated by bats the bats hold on to the freely exposed large and tough flower that opens in the evening or night okay and the bats being no a nocturnal animal it transport the pollen over long distances okay next is malacophily here the pollen grains are carried by the snail now we are going to learn about some adaptations for cross pollination the first one is declining when unisexual flowers either male or a female flowers when they are born on different plants but of the same species then obviously cross pollination will occur likewise here male and the female flower they are born on different plants but they are of the same species 
then obviously cross pollination has to occur this is found in cucurbitaceae family in caricaceae family next is dicogamy here what happen in some bisexual flowers when the stamens do not mature at the same time okay what happens in dicogamy sometimes the anther of the flower matures first sometimes the stigma of the flower matures first so when the anther of the flower mature earlier than the carpel it is said to be protandry okay protandry pro means first andry means androsium so when the anther of the flower is maturing earlier than the carpel of the flower and here in this case just the opposite when the carpel of the flower matures earlier than the anther of the flower it is said to be protogyny next is heterostyly in heterostyly what happens there is difference in the length of the style and the stamen so obviously self pollination will not occur so ensuring cross pollination to occur here next is hypogamy here in some flowers there may be some physical barriers between the anther and the stigma so self pollination becomes very difficult or even impossible so cross pollination here has to occur with the help of some agencies it can be wind it can be insect it can be bat that i have described already another one is self incompatibility here what happens when the pollen grain are not able to fertilize the same flower it is referred to as incompatibility it basically prevents self pollination and promotes cross pollination it is found in brassica radish nicotiana okay next is male sterility here what happens the pollen grains remain non functional that means the male is sterile and thereby preventing self pollination and promoting cross pollination homogamy here what happens it is just the opposite of dicogamy where anther and the stigma matures at the same time so obviously self pollination will likely to occur next is cleistogamy cleistogamy mean cleis means closed that means flower never open that means sex organs be it anther be it stigma okay it remains closed so the pollen grains fall on the stigma of the same flower it has to fall on the same flower so thereby ensuring self pollination now this is found basically in violia oxalis camellia and these are special flowers where both cleistogamy as well as chasmogamy occur now what is chasmogamy chasmogamy is just the opposite of cleistogamy where the anther and the stigma they are exposed so ensuring cross pollination so this flowers which i have just now described here has got both the type of flowers here it is ensuring the self pollination now cleistogamy is followed by geocarpy in geocarpy what happens the pistillate that is being formed it elongates and it bends and penetrates into the soil and the ovary remains inside the soil which 
thereby which eventually results in the formation of fruit so the fruit is formed in the soil thereby the name is geocarpy and it is found in groundnut another type of example that we see which is ensuring self pollination is middleweed jalapa here what happens filament of the stamen bends on the stigma ensuring the self pollination another type of example that we see here is in solanum tuberosum here also what happens the style curves on the anther as a result the pollen grains will likely to fall on the style thereby ensuring self pollination another important example is in is vinca rosea here what happens the anthers are present at the mouth of the corolla tube and when the maturity occurs the stigma passes through the mouth of the corolla tube reaching the anther and thereby causing self pollination now self, both the self pollination and the cross pollination has got advantages as well as disadvantages now what is the advantage of self pollination obviously there is less wastage of pollen grains here there is less failure of pollination here and obviously the purity of the race is maintained uh, less contamination is likely to occur in this type of pollination however it also has got disadvantages the most important disadvantage is that since the pollination is occurring between the uh, flower same flowers of the same plant so obviously no variations can be seen so there is no chances of any production of new species no recombination can occur and thereby reducing the chances of evolution coming to the advantages of cross pollination now cross pollination basically brings about genetic recombination and obviously leading to a new varieties but the disadvantage of cross pollination is here lot of wastage of pollen grains occur there is uncertainty of pollination to occur because cross pollination basically depends upon different types of agencies that i have already described so this is all about pollination in the next part we are going to learn about fertilization process thank you